I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The E stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have Baraska 4. Baraska, if you haven't been listening to the last three episodes, that'd be weird, um, <laughs> is the. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's gone. Oh no. If you don't know what Baraska is, go back to the first episode. <laughs> no, not the first episode of El Dente. Yes. The first, <laughs> first episode of El Dente. <laughs> you need start all from the back. There. You need all the backstory you need all of the, every creepy you need all the, per, like, you need all the backstory of all of our personality and, like, in-jokes and bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, go to, like, the last three episodes. Spoilers, go... This is going to be... Have, like, go If you haven't read Baraska yet and you want to, go check it out at Reddit No Sleep. And yeah, just uh, check it out if you don't want to get heavily spoiled, because we're going to heavily spoil it. Cool. All right. But yeah, Baraska is a Reddit no-sleep story that was started by the Dalek Emperor, or C.K. Walker, which I don't even know if C.K. Walker is actually her real name. I think it might just be her author name. <laughs> pen name. Mm-hmm. Her, yeah, her pen name. Um, and yeah, I actually found some things out uh, about C.K. Walker. Uh, apparently we've done some creep bosses of hers in the past. Huh. But I just didn't. I can't. I didn't recall her name when. Uh, probably because it was. I was thinking Dalek Emperor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the disappearance of Ashley Morgan, and the Chandelier, which was a really short boss that we did like uh, part of a two-story episode. Um, the Chandelier is the the disappearance of Ashley Morgan was a full episode. Hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, I guess we'll dive into Baraska Part Four. So, the last couple of Baraska episodes, I've kind of, I've, I've, if you listen to them, I've inadvertently like referenced them as like, oh, they're kind of like this, or it's, it's like this. Like the first one was kind of like Stephen King, like with all the the kid uh, like mystery and stuff like that. Um, the second one was kind of like, um, like True Detective or like a Nancy Drew uh, Hardy Boys kind of gumshoe like teen stuff. And the next one was. It was like a CW, or like, and also kind of like a CW show kind of thing uh, for like two and three. Mm-hmm. Number four is take that and then just smash it against a true crime um, story, uh, and the, where the kids are completely unprepared for the horror of humanity. <laughs> um, so we start off with Sam and Kyle uh, getting up and starting their search again. Um, they apparently know. They apparently now know that the sound of Braska, like that grinding sound, gives off a smell that uh, a non-smell of death. Yes. And so that's how they know that it means that like people die when it happens. Mm-hmm. That is the first time we're hearing about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds like you're getting into your notes already. Shh. What are you doing? Shh. Um, <laughs> So they run decide, down. This is not they, for your opinion. They, they decide to go to Kathy, the <laughs> historical society woman, mm-hmm. um, to find out about what about the uh, Bra- about Braska and about the um, the mines. And they find out that Braska was like the first, was an unprofitable mind because they don't know what Google is or they don't know what Google search is. Um, no, they mention it. They mention it, but they couldn't find anything. Um, so they decide to go do the uh, uh, use their library use uh, skill and go to an actual. Like historian, um, they get the information. They find out that Bra- uh, the Braska is like the almost unprofitable mine. Um, so they they find out they get a map of the first unprofitable mine of the the mine system that they have around the town, uh, and they figured that's where Braska, where the where the where the noise comes from, where everybody gets, goes and disappears to and die. So they they're given this map by Kathy, just like because she's. Blissfully ignorant and cheerful. Mm-hmm. Um, She's just happy that kids are genuinely, genuinely interested in this sort of thing. Yeah, they also go to. I think they also stop by another restaurant and find Mira, who's super cheerful and happy. And they just straight up tell her that like they're going to go find Baraska, and 
that he can't go to work for the fifth day in a row, and she's just completely cool with it. Yep. Um, and uh, something's weird going on with like the people. Like she, her, she's acting funny. People have been acting really funny in the town. So they get the map. They go out into the, the mountains and they spend hours searching for the mine. They finally find it, and it is a uh, an old abandoned mining site. Uh, with like buildings and stuff like that, and a mine shaft uh, and uh, signs that say, um, "What is it? Uh, what's what's the town's name again?" I can't, like Drisking, Drisking uh, Underground Mining, or the words are all kind of uh, letters are removed, so it says Skinned Men, mm-hmm. men. or Skinned Men. Skinned men. So yes. that's where the Skinned Men legend comes from. Is that people kids saw that, or uh, some kids saw that, and it, it, it telephone tagged. Into the skinned men, um, so they find that out, and then they go. They sneak into this place because they're not sure if anybody's there yet. Uh, and they sneak into one building, and they find it's like the refinery building, and there's a, mach- a giant machine, and they think that that's the machine that w- co- that the sound comes from because it's like this processing machine where like the, it grinds the mineral, the the ore, mm-hmm. uh, and the room is covered in blood, mm-hmm. like or red, like soaked into the soil and. Uh, a, a rancid death smell. So they they get out of that room, that building, and they sneak into another building, where they find. Well, when they sneak start, out, they, they sneak s- out. Then they see a truck there, and like, oh, that's Jimmy Prescott's truck. That's Jimmy Prescott's truck. And, and now they go in full sneak mode. Yeah, like, they go in the tummy sneak. and everything. And they yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they go sneak up beh- uh, to one of the buildings, and like just at, uh, there's a window just above them, and they hear the sounds of sex. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they go. Um, sneak into the, this building from like the other end, and there's just bed after bed after bed of women um, with like full bellies, like pregnant bellies, um, chained and like or like just otherwise subdued mm-hmm. in the in this in this room and building, and it's just like oh this is a baby mill, um, and they go farther in and they find uh, Jimmy having sex with. Uh, a girl from I think number two from part two that was missing. It was one of the the bully uh, kids. Yeah, Kirsty, I think her name was. I don't know. Yeah, um, which one is it? Um, it's uh, it doesn't matter either way. Yeah, it, well, yeah. The, the one bully kid that apparently moved away yeah. with her boyfriend to to college or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. she's she. Uh, yeah. Rude nose. Rude nose. Yeah. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Um. So they then uh, find. What's uh, they find uh, Kimber? Uh, she's drugged up, um, and then they also because they make noises and stuff like that. Uh, Jimmy's aware of them, mm-hmm. and they try to escape. Just talking to them like he's a super villain now. Yeah, mm-hmm. honestly, I kind of equate him to uh, a Far Cry villain. Yeah, like he's just like a dirty, dingy, like son of a like just a son of a bitch, mm-hmm. but um, charismatic at the same time, but like also really skeevy. Yeah, um, very exposition-y. Yes, um, and they try to escape, but uh, they, uh, not before they see. Oh my God! It's um, Kimber. No, not Kimber. They have Kimber. Oh, uh, Whitney. Whitney. Yeah, Whitney's there. Seven years later, and like looks like shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and Kyle wants to get Kimber out of there, but uh, Sam like can't leave. So Kyle and Kimber head off to try to escape. While uh, Sam tries to free Whitney, while Jimmy shows up and just starts monologuing and like being really um, uh, just obnoxious, and like you're, you're you're like he's like Sam's fucked, kind of from the kind of whole thing, possibly literally in this situation. <laughs> you you never know. Um, and then he explains that like that's basically where the town gets its money is basically this baby mill where they impregnate women uh, like they steal and take and uh, impregnate women and then take the children and sell them to black markets but also sell them back to the town because the town is infertile um like it's, it's yeah. part, because of the the whole like mining issue that happened um so and Whitney's baby because she's pregnant as well is going to Mira mm-hmm. um uh, and then that's when uh, another car, a truck pulls in, and uh, we get Sheriff Cleary shows up because both of them were in are in on this, um, and he has Kyle beaten 
uh, and dragging him back. They couldn't get he couldn't find Kimber, but uh, they got Kyle. And then Jimmy like basically just curb stomps Kyle into death, into near death, into practically dead. He's like, like revive his... me. Yeah, that's the stage. He's in. You know, it would be like revive me, and then if the 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 locust still like curb stomped him, mm-hmm. but he somehow survived it. Yes. <laughs> um, and basically, they're t- Sam and, and Kyle are just told or are basically just told that they've lost, but they're not going to kill Sam because he's the son of the sheriff, and just take his car, take Kyle to the hospital because he's still not di- quite not quite dead yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're you're like none of this is going like you're not going to fix any of this like Whitney's going to die like when she because she's uh, this is her probably her last baby yeah and then we're going to feed her to the machine to the shiny gentleman which is mm-hmm. the giant grinding mineral uh, thing and yeah basically Sam just kind of gives up takes Kyle rushes him to the hospital um they take him without question he uh, his dad shows up. Um, takes him home, or starts taking him home, and tries to explain to him that, like, he's not going to say any of this. Like, And he's like, basically, he's in on it. And he's covering it up. And that's Wait, when... Who's he's on it? Who's uh, in on it? The, Sam's dad. Like, he's covering it up. Like, he's got to be covering this up. Or just painfully ignorant mm-hmm. of what's going on. Or painfully, like, manipulable. Um... To the point where Kyle, like, doesn't he, or uh, Sam just, like, fuck you, dad, and, like, just runs away from Drisking, uh, like, just leaves, and never looks back. Um, we cut to four drunken years later, uh, sometime in Chicago. Did you mention that his dad was blaming him? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, basically they're covering it up by blaming him. Yeah. That he was the one that beat up, uh, Kyle, and now Kyle's also in a coma and may never be the same again. Mm-hmm. And... Well, he's a vegetable. Yeah, he's they sent vegetable. him home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Sam is just now living in Chicago, away from Drisking, and he gets a letter from from Kimber with the suicide note, and it is basically what we kind of all thought: it's um, ex- exposition about the town again, <laughs> um, where the town has subsisted on a baby mill, where they take kids and stuff like that, or they take people that are, uh, like, not going to be missed, or sometimes even people from the town. Um, Jimmy Prescott and Sheriff Cleary are in, or are the ones that, like, impregnate. Prescott is the, is, uh, the, 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 Prescott's kids are, all start with a P, Cleary's kids all start with a K, mm-hmm. um, and, yeah, the reason they all, do, they all do this is because it's, super profitable for the town and also because the town is infertile practically so because the mining and stuff of that and the dust the powder that we all thought was drugs or like iron dust and some of that is actually the ground up bones of the of people from the shining gentleman machine uh, laid out across the the mountain um and that's kind of where the story ends is just after we read that the creepy Suicide note revelation. The story ends there. Um, so that was Braska four. So um, with that cheery note, yeah. everyone expects the Grand Inquisitions at this point. When I pulled up to his house the next morning, I could tell Kyle had cracked. He, his skin had taken a yellowed color, and his voice was flat and void of emotion. What the hell? Get Kyle to a doctor. He's gone yellow. That's it's because yeah. um, That was actually uh, the actual thing, though. Is like uh, it's get rid of the um, he in the last sentence. Like he, his skin had taken a yellow color. Mm. Like his skin had taken a yellow color. I could see from where I was standing near the doorway that it was a map, and I knew we weren't living. Th- <laughs> Sorry, I caught it, <laughs> and then I was like, I, t- I couldn't help but chuckle there. <laughs> I couldn't see from where I was standing near the doorway that it was a map, and I knew we weren't living this office without it. Well, that's right, we weren't going to be living in this office, because it's supposed to be we weren't leaving this office without it. Mm -hmm. Um, A gun? Where are we going to get a gun, Kyle? From you, Dad. 
I did. Ah, oh, caveman okay, <laughs> Kyle's dialogue is back. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, obviously, it's supposed to say, like, from your dad. No. <laughs> from you, dad. <laughs> from you, dad. <laughs> My God. Kyle is secretly Sam's <laughs> What a revelation. <laughs> well, he is a year older than they are. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, there's enough scheme in this fucking story as revelation as is. Mm-hmm. Um, within an hour, I began regretting that we'd come without provisions, emotional and unprepared. What? What is this? What is that ending trying to say? Like, I began to re- I began regretting that we'd come without provisions, emotional and unprepared. Like, it seems like it's missing a word or something. Like, yeah. we were emotional and yeah. unprepared. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, I almost dropped Kimber when I saw her staring at me. Her eyes were hollow and uninvested. And when I turned toward her, she looked away immediately as if she couldn't stand the sight of me. Okay, wait. So, okay. I think that first sentence should be a bit clearer on what's going on like this I almost dropped Kimber when I saw a figure on a bed nearby staring at me I thought she... something along those lines because it's not Kimber looking at him at are that you point sure? it's, it's actually Whit- no, this is when he sees Whitney for the first time are you 100% sure yes then yes that has to be changed if that's yep. the case yeah yep. and that way yeah, I, in that, my head it was Kimber the entire... yeah no that's what I thought initially and then, all and of then sudden, the next sentence oh, it's like <laughs> it was Whitney I was like Wait, so that was who... Okay. Yeah, like, it, that way it, it doesn't reveal Whitney until dramatically appropriate, mm-hmm. but also mm-hmm. doesn't confuse her with Kimber, which is what yeah. was going on in that sentence. Yeah. Um, I envisioned that as Kimber. It's yeah, like, and then... Why is he giving him the cold shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the next one is, Jimmy laughed loud as if it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. What was wrong with that? <laughs> Your notes are so on Oh, point no, that, that, that's what it was. Sorry. <laughs> Jimmy laughed loud as if it was funniest thing he had ever heard. So just the funniest thing he'd ever mm-hmm. heard. Um, and then this one is dialogue technically, but... I ain't your fucking employee and I don't have all fucking day to play and hide and seek in the woods. So I feel like it just needs to get rid of and... Um, hide and seek. Like, yeah. I don't have time to play hide and seek in the woods. Not, I don't have time to play and hide and seek in the woods. Well, maybe he showed up to play, and then he's asking him to go do hide and seek in the woods. Maybe, maybe. Probably not though. No. Uh, and that's my grammar inquisitions. Just one page. <coughs> Mikey, these things read. How many does. butts and ands do you got in the front of those sentences? All right. Um... <laughs> That's, that's just how kind of I start like my, my segue to, to my geese. One of these times you're gonna be like, none, actually, I'm done. <laughs> my face melts. Mm-hmm. I mean we wouldn't know it's out of the hood, so Yeah, well no, it's just dripping out of the hood. Alright. I think you already went over this one, but I'll do it anyway just to be sure. There's an extra and. Um and, yeah, you touched on it earlier, but with the he, his skin had taken on the yellow color and his voice was flat and void of emotion. So it was, had taken on a yellow color, comma, his voice was flat and void of emotion. Yeah, but those weren't the... I, I, yeah, it's like... You yeah. don't follow an and with an and. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you win this round. And every... Past round and every future round as well, probably. Definitely, maybe. There you go. All right. So I have a front end, but it's also it's a front end butt. Is that what you said? It's a front end butt. It's a front end. However, However. okay, <laughs> it's totally it's totally <laughs> That's true. It is. How many times are we gonna bring up Bruno? You brought that one up today. I was I was abstaining from doing that joke today, and you did. <laughs> because you have a problem with it, I was gonna not do it. 
I didn't say I really have a problem. Have I said I had a problem? Like, I cut to like, an audience. It was like, it's like, could you stop doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Just a montage of you telling me to stop doing it. Oh, man. If I was, <clears throat> if I was a more anal retentive editor, I probably would go back and. Stick if you're more of a Barry. Yeah. Where it's like his job to go back and through. Yeah, if, I, if I had the time, if I had, the, like, if I was getting paid more for this than I am. More? <laughs> in that, in that, in that I'm not at all, yeah. aside from posting bills. Mm. Um, I would probably go back and do that, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> anyway, so, as I was saying, it's also a run into an actual thought. Okay, so, well, I mean, I did that with uh, Get Kyle to a Hospital because he's gone yellow. Yeah. And I think you have a note on this actual thought, so I'm just bringing that up. Do I? Well, I'll I'll start talking, and then you'll you'll see. Go go on. The sound the great beast machine of Baraska gave off the distinct stench of death. And, though I knew that physically that was impossible, it didn't change my mind about it. The air smelled different. After the metallic wailing ended. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I did have that part. That's my second note. <laughs> um. Yes. So, I, I read that first sentence, uh, like, for actual thought. It's like, ah, sounds don't give off stenches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, like, I, I guess he's being poetic. Yeah. Essentially being but, like... The sound brings the stench because whatever's making the sound creates a stench that immediately like, yeah, covers you, the entire town. Yeah, or like, yeah, either that or like, for some reason, it, like the sound instinctively reminds him of death. Yeah, and then it does correct itself with the air smell different after the metallic wailing ended. Oh, okay, so that, yeah, so, so this is the first time we're hearing about this thing that we've heard that apparently is going on for years. Yeah. And it's just like them knowing that the sound meant death previously. Yeah. And but, now it's death and smell. But why not bring up the smell... Immediately? In, in the, the first part, <clears throat> because kids notice smells... Especially if they're up on the mountain, too. Yeah. Like, yeah, they were closer when they were at the tree. Yeah, yeah like, the only... Re- like, in the first one... I, I know this is a natural thought, but fuck it. Um, like, in the first one, like, they, they all freak out at the noise because it's so fucking loud. And it's such a terrible noise. But it's never mentioned that it's like they smell anything awful about it. It's just mm-hmm. that it's an awful noise. Yeah. So. And the fact that it's been happening to them countless times for years. Yeah. Even if they didn't notice it the first time because of the shock of everything, they would have noticed it by now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm hmm. Uh, before now. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my front end and then actual thought mixed in. That's fair. Uh, and then I have a front end, followed soon after by a front butt. Oh, Ooh. man. <clears throat> nice combo. We parked at the trailhead and made the familiar hike down the marked trail and then up the beaten path, realizing that we'd have to travel past Ambercott Fort in the way. <laughs> That's also wrong sentence. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> well, but, and was used very early. Well, I, I haven't gone to the end yet. Oh. <laughs> you said end early on. Yeah, I did say end. Part, it was, it it was part of the sentence. So this next sentence begins with and. Well, I'm saying that that is a run on because they used and so early. Normally well, you use and late in the sentence, don't you, to continue it? Well, they used and twice, so it's a run on sentence yeah. anyway. Yeah. Either way. So, and then it has... And I knew in my heart that we were going the right way. So that's yeah. the front end there. You, you need to break it up a bit more with the run-on beforehand and whatnot. It, it helps that they broke it up a bit, but not with hand. Mm-hmm. Alright, so the next one. We were walking the same path that so many people before us had on their way to Baraska. But what had they found there? I mean, just what had they found there? Yeah. Yeah. 
would have been fine. Or I wonder what they found there. Yeah. You know, just... Yeah, yeah. I wondered. What had they found there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and then I have another front end. Kyle, for his part, said nothing and kept his eyes straight and his mission his priority. And then, just as the sun teetered on the apex of the day, we saw an emptiness through the trees and the hard lines of man-made buildings. So just then, comma, continue? Yeah. Essentially? Yep. And I think I just have one more. Front end. When I had assured myself that the Kyle I knew... (laughs) (laughs) That the Kyle. Mm -hmm. The Kyle. Wow. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, I mean, like... Well, why don't we continue? Yeah, continue. Sorry, yeah. Well, we cut them off. Yeah, (laughs) silly. I think... uh, Yeah. Sorry. Let's go. When I had assured myself that the Kyle I knew was dead and only his empty husk remained, I left his house and hitchhiked out of town. And after I spent uh, four drunken fuel... uh, Four drunken, drug-fueled years in Chicago, I came home one day to find a letter waiting for me. So, so that was mainly the ant, right? Yeah, the ant. Yeah, because the, the Kyle makes sense yeah. in context yeah. to the rest of the sentence. Yes, yeah. we, we cut you off. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, I gave him a shot. Uh, it's like, it's like I, I kicked him and shot him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it, it, a it, weird it's glare. One, it's one of, it's one yeah. of those <laughs> moments where like you just stop, and then like and the, then, the visual is so much different. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. That's your, your grammar positions. Yep, that is the end of my grammar <clears throat> positions. Hi, Grammar Inquisitor, Gamer in Yellow. What have you have? Wait, what like, have you? <laughs> what have you? What have you? Yes. Um, I have grammar related discrepancies, actually. Excellent. It's the grammar in yellow. Right. Yes. It's problems I found with my highlighter, of course. That's why they're in yellow. Um, that one was done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. All right. No, actually, I got two. <laughs> um, uh, this is after they find out the situation at the at Skeevland. Yeah. Um, I believe this is Kyle saying this. I'll fucking kill Jimmy Prescott. Where is that motherfucker? You know he's involved in all this, Sam. You know. Um, that's just simply when he says, where is this motherfucker? It's with an exclamation point. It should be exclamation point question mark. <laughs> that's a question. <laughs> you, you're not wrong. Yeah. Because it's not a statement. It's a question. It, it, yes. it, is, a, it is both a question and a statement. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, uh... <clears throat> I'm fine. Uh... Okay. Um, this is inside again, I guess, at, at Ski Land. Uh, they were cracked open, and when we squeezed inside, I had no doubts that death was indeed present in Baraska. So, the problem there is it says, inside I was had, no doubts? <laughs> oh, I missed that one. <laughs> yes. Uh, so it should just be, inside I had no doubts that death was indeed present. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, because it was it was sounded like it was like I was, I didn't, like it's like I was in no doubt or no, I was I, had no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> you do what? <laughs> yeah, it is K Man Cow. Yeah, yes. CMK K Man Cow. Yes, yes. And that is the end of the the grammar in yellow. All right. Well, I guess we'll move on to actual thoughts. Yes. Um, so just kind of to tie on to like what you said earlier, um, Mikey, about with the um, the noise mm-hmm. and like the fact that yeah it. it why didn't we get this earlier, like in mm-hmm. the previous parts? This is a similar one. Um, the town I'd grown to love seemed so foreign to me now. Whitney hadn't been an outlier like the like I'd thought. Missing people were the norm here. Okay. 
This would have been good to have mentioned more from the, in the previous segments, specifically part two, mm-hmm. as it would have also shown more of Sam's obsession that last seven years. Mm-hmm. Like, how did he not find this? Like, like the miss, more missing people mm-hmm. in his search for Whitney in Drisky. Yeah. <laughs> like, over seven years. Part four is tying up all the little loose I know. It's putting just, bridges uh, over the plot holes. Yeah. <laughs> it's patchwork. It's like putting on, like, putting plaster over those holes on the wall. Pretty much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next one I have is, I'm not sure if it's an error or just something, but I'll, I'll just read and we'll talk about it. We drove over to 4th Street Gourmet Coffee and Blah. 4th Street Gourmet Coffee and Blah. We do. I, I do like their, their gourmet coffee, but the blah is, it's subpar at best, I would say. We drove over to 4th Street <laughs> Gourmet Coffee and Bakery and went in to buy our usual provisions of rock stars and monsters. As I paid for the four packs of cans, I, yeah, as I paid for the four packs of cans, I saw Mira waiting on coffee at the end of the bar. Wait. Didn't she work at Prescott Artisan Sandwiches? She doesn't live there. She's not I, tied to the... No, 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 no. She's waiting. As in, like, waiter. Like, she's like she's a waitress. No. No, she was waiting on coffee. Oh! She's waiting for coffee. Okay. See, that that's why I wasn't sure. Like, because, like, why is she there? Or she's, <laughs> like, waiting. She's oh, literally I, waiting. I, 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 took it, I took it as, like, waiting at, for, like, on, like, waiting on coffee as in, like, giving people Waiting coffee. on tables? Yeah. No, she's waiting yeah, okay. directly on coffee. The, All right. the coffee maker is brewing, and she's sitting on top of it, literally waiting on it. That's not right at all, either. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so, at the end of the bar. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, my bad. I'll just... Like, that was a bad. <laughs> of course, yes. Um, Can I continue with my thought in the same area? Oh, sure. Um, when it said, uh, we drove to 4th Street Gourmet Coffee and Bleh and went to buy our usual provisions of rock stars and monsters, I just imagined that they come out with Kyle holding a dozen Pokeballs and being followed by the entire band of the Rolling Stones. You're not wrong. I, I also, like, <laughs> had, there's a, a brief second, a millisecond, where it's like, it's like, they're, they're combating rock stars and monsters. Yeah. Or no, they're gathering monsters and rock stars to fight Braska. Indeed, yes. They, they need music. For the epic bat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Indeed. Right, let's continue. Yes. Um, the next one is... Uh, it was probably a good time to tell her I was calling out of work for the fifth day in a row. Hi, Mira, I muttered when I approached. Uh, I can't come in again today. I've got some some real important... Sam, oh my gosh, how are you? Uh, uh, okay, I stuttered. Good, she said, brightly. You're fired. I said. <laughs> she also. <laughs> she's like, like seriously. I know. I know it's a slow running business, like the the artisan sandwiches. Yeah. But calling out five days from work, like, and then we've and then, already established. This I know. Though, and then know? and then following up with this, we're trying to find Baraska. Uh, this is uh, this is um, uh, Kyle. Just kind of saying in the background. Uh, We're trying to find Baraska, he said, with all the gravitas of a eulogy. Ah, yes. Owen told me you'd you'd asked him about that. You know, that's just a story, Sam. That legend has seen... has been... uh, That legend has been around since I was a kid. Yeah, well, we're looking for our missing friend, Kimber. We think maybe she's... There. I trailed off lamely. Oh, Really? I thought her, I heard the Desteros were staying with relatives in Maine over the summer. Oh well. Anyway, good luck, boys. Uh, seriously, what the fuck? This is like, first off, you tell your your manager that you're going off into the woods to find a a, a local legend, and that's yep. why you can't come into work today. Yep. And she's not firing you. Yes. It's, reprimanding it's you. Prescott Artesian <laughs> sandwiches. No one goes there. I understand. They don't it's, even the staff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, apparently. It's entirely run by Prescott just wanting that business open, and he has the money to he do it. He just really wants those sa- He just really likes those sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even if there's no one there to make it for him when he shows up. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I mean, I still have like, a store. Like, That's it, pretty neat. It's just a further red flag on, on, on the weirdness of this town. Like, <clears throat> there is something really fucked up with this town. Uh, even before we get to the skeevy shit. 
Um, I mean artisan sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. I mean artesian sandwiches. Artesian. Artesian. Right. Sorry. Am yeah, I bad? Am I bad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very different. Also, things. if you notice, I was being, I was, I was going with your way of saying it, saying artisan the whole time. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the right way. Yes. Although when we're talking about something douchey, you should say artesian. Yes. Uh, all right. So the next one I have. Um, well, actually, yeah. He said, "A Baraska instead of just Baraska." You know, like, it's a thing instead of a place. Kyle lowered his rock star. And is it? Is it what? Is it a thing? I don't know. I've never heard of it. I've googled everything weird about this town, but nothing ever came up. Did you spell it right? I don't know. I shrugged. Do you know, do you know how to spell it? No. I pulled out my phone. Really? With Google, Google's auto-search function, you couldn't find anything about what a Baraska was. Uh, yeah, but this isn't necessarily in the same t- time we're in right now. I understand that. It's, Absolutely. like, it's, uh, but, like... <sighs> it's the original I, Google. Maybe it didn't have autocorrect yet, somehow. I just... Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's a pronunciation thing, so it's spelled one day, but pronounced completely differently. Like sort of an X. But moving, yeah. Okay. So I also know the spelling because we read it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, the thing. yeah. We know the spelling, but do we? Are we saying it correctly? Well, that's true. We could be saying it completely but they wrong. They say it in dialogue. Yeah, that's, but we yeah. read it as that. But if it could be pronounced entirely differently. I suppose. It is. Like Sibbathen or Graska. That's how it's pronounced. <laughs> so how do you spell it? I don't fucking know. You try to spell that. Oh, and it could be Borska. Who knows? That's true. Maybe. Probably not. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Audience, if you want to tell us how to properly say Braska, maybe we've been saying it wrong the entire time. <laughs> It's entirely possible, mm-hmm. um, but anyway, yeah. I just I was like, really? You you, you googled it? You, you tried googling it? And you, st- you came up with nothing? My first Google search for Baraska was the definition of it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But what you don't know is that the B R and the C are silent. Mm-hmm. So it's as a as a as a it's as a it's just as a. Okay. That's how that's how they say it. Right. Uh, it's entirely possible. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, is the Baraska the first mount? Ma- uh, is the Baraska the first mine that ran out of ore? Um, that no. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm trying to like speak. I'm trying to read ahead of like to find out if this is actually a question because <laughs> the way it's said. Is the Baraska the first mine that ran out of ore? Um, was that, by chance, the same one those kids disappeared in? The McCaskies? Oh no, I don't think so. That particular mine was the Southwest Mine, and was very close to town. Wait, the McCaskies were kids? I actually went back to part two and check, and it doesn't straight up say that they were miners. Like, where, where does it miners say that as in, like, workers at the well, mine. The, where but, does it say that they're kids here? They were the, brothers. The, one of those, uh, the same, like, was that by chance the same one those kids disappeared in? The McCaskey brothers? Okay. S- old people call no, everyone younger except, than them kids. Except that was Sam or Kyle saying, uh, asking that question. Okay, but the McCaskies were, they learned about them through her saying, mentioning the McCaskies earlier, referring to them as kids. Yes. So her referring to them as kids could put it in their mind that they're the same age as them, although in reality, they're like 20 or 30. Maybe. I don't know. It just, it threw me off because I like, I was always, for some reason, always getting the impression they were actually like workers at the mine. Me too. And that's why, but like, Hmm. it seems like the story actually treats them as if they were like a a group of kids that actually just went went into the mines and and like went missing. Or that they're workers. Yeah, that, that's what that's why I'm confused. Is because like I went it could back be like sixteen year old miners. That's true. Yeah, because they was, like, was that time period. Okay, yeah, well, no, like that was also the time period they would have like people that young. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so they're minor miners. Yes, mm-hmm. they're miners, not miners. No, they're minor miners. They're miners and miners. So they're yeah. minor miners. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Done. Glad we, <laughs> we came to that conclusion. Yeah. Um. 
Can we take this? Kyle asked. We'll, we'll bring it back. Oh, of course. I'm sure I have a cop. I'm sure I have copies. Listen, if you boys go are going exploring... Oh, I'm bringing my dad with me. I lied. Oh, excellent. Then, um, you guys have fun. She yelled at us as we rushed out the building. Okay, out of all the weird folks in Drisking, Catherine is actually probably my favorite. She's just normal. Just, I guess I just have, I'm a sucker for oblivious, cheerful, obliviously cheerful academics. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yes, well of course, here, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's the, uh, here's the map of the, the dangerous mines. And the, uh, <laughs> oh, you're bringing, but I uh, would bring some, uh, oh, you're bringing your dad? No problem. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> just like, I just love those characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's the Google. Yes. Yeah, she's the town's Google. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. <laughs> the only person in town who knows how to use Google. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's just like, oh. <laughs> They're just like watching in awe. <laughs> My god. I like an old iMac. Like one of the old, like, the color, the multicolored ones that you can buy. <laughs> yes. Um, and then the next thing I have. Fine. Then let's scout the place first, and then we'll come back with a gun. That didn't seem like a good idea to me either. But what choice did we have? I mean, at this point, you guys might as well just lean into the teen shenanigans and just take a gun. Or like, mm-hmm. take your dad's gun or something like that. And then update. They really could have used that by the end of the story. They also wouldn't have been able to take a gun from him. Yeah, because... Well, I mean, he might have had one in the house. It's just laying around. I mean, he might... He might Sam might know where I, I know, well, like, Sam might it, know where it like, is that keeps them. Yeah. yeah, in a gun safe. That's a key. Well, it, they're team gum. They're it, team gum shoes. Okay. This and we're also in America, where, I mean, both of them probably have been shooting guns since they were able to hold a gun. That's a little stereotypical. <laughs> stereotypical? <laughs> right? <laughs> Very different thing to if it was stereotypical. This yes. is stereotypical. That's why I said yes, that. indeed. Yeah, that's that's pretty uh, stereotypical. Yeah, yeah. So establish that. Like, <laughs> okay, I don't. I, they might not be like I know they're in the Ozarks. I know they're in the Midwest. That they're in flyover country. Yeah, and what's there to do but shoot things? They might not be the Americans that shoot or the the the, the, the tote guns. They might not. Be yeah. That. So yeah, oh, the Americans that don't tote guns all the time. So everyone else in the world, <laughs> the non-Americans. <laughs> I, I would just apologize to our American listeners. Um, we don't always think you're gun toting nuts. Well, the. They're not all nuts. <laughs> yeah. They all tote guns, but they're not all nuts. Why? Why are you making them seem like they're all crazy? I know, I'm just... I'm, they I'm have being, the I'm, Fifth Amendment. Sorry, they have I'm the right being, to bear arms. That, They're not yeah. nuts. Jeez, what's wrong with you? I'm, I'm just being very stereotypical. You really are. It's not cool. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. Good. Apologize to everyone at home. I, I would like to apologize as the cultist for my bigotry. Good. So my big eye tree. <laughs> <laughs> my big eye tree. <laughs> pants outside. Big there's eye a tree. tree. No, no, my, my no. tree. No, your big eye tree. It pans outside. There's a giant tree outside that's full of eyes. It's right there. See. If only we were a visual podcast. I, we, we are, aren't we? <laughs> no. Oh. Why are you tell me to like, get in my full ninja gear every single time? Because it's fun. Uh, I mean, that's true. I do have to go to work after this, so it's fine. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, moving right along. <laughs> uh, and then we mentioned the thing earlier, like in the rundown, about like Drisking Underground Mine. Uh, and how the, what was left, however, was S K I N N D M I N, or the Skinman. So, first thing, I'm sorry, but you got underground from N D? <laughs> like, at all those spaces, I guess. No, but, like, hang on. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> they're not erased. They're worn way down. I, I guess. When yeah, you're standing even, in even front even of if it. They're, even if they are gone, there might be, like, an imprint, like, a very faded imprint of, yes. like, where they used to be. It's, I, like, I from that, a distance, it, like, it would look like Skindaman. But yeah. if you go up, it's like, okay, that's you, and, yeah. like, you could clearly it, it see just, it. it threw me, I was like... That's a real... That's a kind of a stretch. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. Yes. 
Because I was like, that's some teen detective work. Why haven't you figured this story... Why haven't you figured this mystery out years ago? But also, um, from a uh, local legend folklore study kind of point of view, um, it's actually kind of cool that, like, that's how the Skinned Man legend came out of. Like, it was just a phone tag of urban legend. Like... Some kids saw skinned men, and then years later, the skinned men are a creature or an entity in the woods that like take kid people from to the to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Like just from a like a like build like a lore building of like or the folklore of or, and local legends. Like that's really cool uh, how that how they presented that. It's like if there's a Waffle House with the W worn off, and it's an Waffle House. It had a legend about the Waffle House where yes. all the bad things happen. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the next thing I have, uh, we were standing in what I guessed was a refinery, and in the middle of the room was a large silver conical shape, yeah, conically shaped machine. Also, is it conically? Or conically? Conically, conically, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just curious, I'm genuinely yeah. curious, curious. I think it, it, it's like tomato, tomato kind of thing. Um, like, it sounds, to me it sounds better if I say conically. Mm-hmm. So it's like tomato tomato where like you can say either, but one hundred percent of English speakers say it one way. Maybe. <laughs> Someone says tomato. Yeah. Um, like even Christopher Walken doesn't say it. Uh, we were standing in what I guessed was a refinery, and in the middle of the room was a large silver canonically shaped machine. A conveyor belt fed into it, and the room had a sour smell. Even the dirt beneath our feet seemed to have taken a on a crimson tint. So, I know, sorry, so there's more to go, apparently. This is the machine. This is where they take them, I said. This is the place where people die. Okay. Yes, I'm going to say this. I feel that con- conically shaped machine needs a bit more description like, I infer that, after reading the full paragraph, that it's some sort of rock-crushing machine, like for the minerals and stuff like that, because the conveyor belt. Uh, and now they use it to kill people, uh, as evidenced by the crimson-tinted ground and the sour smell. But more elaboration on the machine, even saying probably used at one point for crushing down ore, would help illustrate the machine more than... A refinery room with a canonically machine, a, con, a con, conical machine, cone shaped machine, and a conveyor belt. It just seems like conical machine. All I think when I see when I when they say conical machine is just a silver cone <laughs> in the, uh, with a with a conveyor belt that goes to it. Like I, I feel like if it's going to go like this, it should be two conical machines that like grind like that grind together, like uh, and with the conveyor belt going in between them. What, what, that's say, what, one would say that is a conical machine because it's made of cones. Yeah, but all all this says is just one conical machine. Does it say one? It It says says a was a large silver conically shaped machine. Yes, so it could be made with 15,000 cones. It's still one conically shaped machine. I suppose. It's just, again, like, I feel like... I I, I agree with you through this whole thing. Okay. That's technically not wrong. I thought you were going to counter me. No, not really. I mean, I I didn't have a problem with it because you you assume what it is. But but without saying specifically that it was um, something for crushing ore then it could just be some weird machine that they brought in after the fact. Yeah, exactly. And like, it'd be yeah. something completely different. Yeah, like, and it, like when, you, when you read the whole paragraph, like you can kind of like just safely infer that that's what this is for. But I hate assuming. I know, yeah. you do. But I, I, I'm, I'm saying, like, I'm actually on your side for this one. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I could have used a little bit more description of yeah. this. Yeah, you could use more polygon count. Yeah. That's true. On this, this yeah. video game. It's like they simulation. they spent all their budget on making the, the scenery. And they're like, shit, let's have to put the machine oh, in. And the sound. We're going to have to ship it in, fu- in like one minute. Uh, put in a, a silver cone in the middle. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just drops it going. <laughs> uh, texture. Uh, sh- shiny. <laughs> chrome. <laughs> chrome. <laughs> ship it. Oh. Yeah. It's like they spent all their money on the, the, the sound work. Yeah, that too. Yeah. 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 And they just added smell vision this time. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, it's just like, 
I, I, that's why I prefaced as like, yes, I'm going to say this. This could use a little bit more description. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not just assuming that. But yeah, it's just... Uh, and moving right along. Um, and then this is Jimmy... Uh, two hands? Yeah, Jimmy two hands. Um, no, no one knows what I that know. is. I know. Sure. <laughs> um, no, this is uh, Jimmy... Uh, Stronger. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'll stop making references that no one else will understand. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so this is Jimmy Prescott. I tried to get that out of the way. If you did another one, you son of a bitch. Um, I admire your grit, kid, Jimmy said, and then sat down on a bed behind me and continued to watch me, giving no objection to what I was doing. You probably think your friends got away, but there's no sense in false hope, is there? You know, all this points to the baby farm all around the characters at this point. Um, is all types of wrong and terrible, <laughs> but I do, but I do like, from a writing point of view, how Jimmy acts here. It makes him all the more terrible and terrifying and unlikable because he's taking it easy and with glee and gives the indication that he's in complete control of the situation, even as Sam tries desperately to untie his sister. And Jimmy lets him, like, lets himself just monologue. Um, like, this guy is in control, and he knows it. And that is both creepy and also all sorts of terrible. Um, so, for me, this was actually a decent villain moment, like, I, I wanted, with his monologue. I also kind of got, um, he's kind of the sort of villain, he kind of is portrayed in this point as the sort of villain that you'd see as the main villain in, like, a Far Cry game. Um, like, specifically Far Cry 3 or even Far Cry 5, where they're just, like, they got the character, like, down, like, put down, like, like strapped down or, like, tied up, and they're just kind of monologuing to them and, like, killing people, like, like killing, like, other random victims and taking great pleasure in that they have full control of the whole situation mm -hmm. and that you're just fucked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, again, don't get me wrong, he is despicable and horrid as a character, but as a, uh, as a person in the story. He has character to him. Like, he... not Almost like a fun kind of character to him. Like, he, like, takes great pleasure in what he's doing. And he's charismatic in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that does kind of make sense, because he's charismatic uh, to the, in the public eye as well. So why wouldn't he be charismatic outside of the... Uh, like, when he's doing his, like, the dirty work. Um, also, this is just true human horror, like... Fuck. <laughs> I had inklings it was going to go down this way, but yeah, I think damn. Like, pretty early on, like in part two, we were like, they, they're only taking women. This is not going to go well. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then it happened. Actually, so I've been, I've been editing the, uh, the previous Barask episodes uh, like last couple of days. Do you want that slow-mo sound effect? No, I, it's fine. It's already, it's already done. Oh, okay. Um, but... Uh, there's a bunch of predictions that we do, that we mentioned, that happened. And I was like, yeah, we, if only you knew what was coming up mm. in 4. Yeah, yeah, Um, and then, sorry, my next, uh, my next quote is, you know, try to understand, Sammy, it's not just about the money. We use the stables for community services, too. Lots of people in town come to us, you know, ever since the 50s. And there's the infertility link in town. So it actually did tie, come together throughout the entire story. And uh, we were all we're like, we picked it up early on. And then it's like, why does this keep coming up? And it's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It's there um, for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's the thing, ref uh, and then he refers to the baby that uh, Whitney has. Uh, she's got one of our community service babies in her. Oh, shit, Mira. Fuck. Does that immediately confirm it's Mira? She's I'm pretty sure. Well, she's it, not a community service worker. No, no, no. Okay, when they say community service baby, like, it's a baby for the community. Oh, okay. I took it a completely different way. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I understand. Yeah, that's how I took it. And then later on, it's confirmed because, like, a couple of days later, the, uh, the dailies got a, had a baby. Did it say that? In the paper, yeah. Oh, okay. Because he, uh, he was reading, uh, before he left... He was reading to hear if um, if uh, Kyle had died or something like that, mm -hmm. and he saw you know, that like a baby was born to the dailies. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and then 
there's the uh, regards to the, the that refinery machine. She's been putting out ship babies though, and as soon as this one's out of her, she's got a date with the shiny gentleman. Oh God! It is that is the shiny gentleman the refinery machine? This is my my my, my first comment as I was reading that that st- sentence in the moment, and then my update is like, yes, yes, it is. Of course it is. I didn't realize that until I finished reading that part. I was like, oh. Oh, you didn't... That's why it's called the shiny... That's why it's, it's called the shiny gentleman. Oh, shit. Oh. I, I just... I it, it, it flew over my head until, like, that moment. Fair. Um, and then... Now, and then this is part in regards to... This is in the uh, part where he's reading the uh, the suicide note. Most people will blame the town for letting the iron ore leak into our water table during the collapsing of our mines. So the powder wasn't drugs, but iron sands or iron dust. That's what I thought. That's what I, I that feel. Update. Nope. It, the powder was actually the bones of the dead. Mm-hmm. I still think that it would have been better if it had been the iron sands leaking into the water table that it was why the, why it was referred to as the powder. Because the Prescotts it's... and the Sheriff are the ones... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Start going right into the next quote. Jeez. Because, like, cause like Tom, like, he, like, is, like, it doesn't, uh, like, know what it's... It doesn't know that's bad. Um, people make it bad. Or say it's bad and some of that. And it's just, like, when... And when she re- refers to it that it's, like, it's the bones of people, like, sprinkled across the mountain, it's, like... Okay, that's just bone meal for, like, the for the, for the forest. Exactly, it makes like, the plants grow. And like, <laughs> I just, I, I, I guess. Have you ever go, gone up to a crop in Minecraft and just hit it with yes. bone meal? And just no, bam! I, I know, I know that. Yeah, I, know, <laughs> I get that. I just mean like in terms of like the way it's been like the powder has been like talked about in the story. It never, it, it doesn't seem. It seems like it would be more effective if it had been like the iron ore rather than like bone meal, like human bone meal. Or honestly, it sounded more realistic that it would have been drugs. Cause, yeah, like mm-hmm. he was saying. That, like, they might say it's bad, but it's good for the town, you know? Oh, God. Did he, did he actually say that it was good for the town? Pretty much, yeah. I wonder if maybe that's where he's coming from. Is that, like, because it's, it's, it's not good for, well, maybe not good for like, the town. It's, it's, it's bad. Like, people say it's bad because it's, like, dead people. But it's good for the forest because it makes the forest grow. I, I think it's literally just the fact that everything before they're turned into dust is good for the town. Yeah, maybe. They're used know, it before. Just seems, yeah, it just seemed like kind of... I was a little, uh, I guess, not unimpressed, but just a little... Disappointed? A little disappointed by, like, the revelation that the powder was actually just dead people. Mm-hmm. Like, I, th- I feel like it would have been better if it was, like, either drugs or the mine, or the iron sands or iron dust. But the, the iron dust in the water table doesn't help anyone. It's the entire problem. There's no positive Yeah, that's true, that. yeah. That's fair. I don't know. It was just yeah, it was just one of those things that kind of soured a little bit with me. Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my final actual thought before we go into final thoughts. Thank God. No, Sorry. before we go into Mikey's. <laughs> um, uh, the Prescott and the Sheriff are the ones who impregnate the girls, and the children are named after them. P children for Prescott, K children for Sheriff. Oh, oh wow. Um, shit. That's. That's that's actually a terrifying revelation right there. Mm-hmm. Just let that sink in, audience, and you guys, if you haven't guessed it yet. How many children do we have we seen in this story that are named P's and named K's? I just happen to have a list of every single character. And who's, <laughs> who's been dating who? Kyle and Kimber. Yeah. I predicted and that they were why, cousins. Yeah, you did. That's, that's what I brought up. It was like, <laughs> because they're both ginger. And that's why that's why his, her parents don't like him. Wait, is Cleary a ginger then? Possibly? Probably, yeah. Um, that's why there's so many gingers. And, that's, and notice Parker? And why he's different. Why he's different is because he's actually a Prescott. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, every girl, or every kid, almost every kid in the story, except for, like, I think, uh, Emmeline... Who there's is, a few. Yeah, there's there's one or two, but I mean those those ones can be out, are outliers because they can be like out of town. So like Sam, yeah, um, and Whitney. And not to say that every co- that every <laughs> K and P are yeah. them, but probably. Yeah. Also, so Kyle, Parker, uh, Phil, Christy, 
Uh, I don't know the Christy number. was the girl that was getting fucked by Yeah, that's... Guy. Um, yeah, that, that gets kind of oh, nasty yeah. if you... Yeah, because that's, that's... That's not Prescott's, though. No, it wasn't Prescott's, but it's still disgusting. It's still weird. Yeah. yeah. It's still not good. <laughs> yeah. There's a Phoebe. Yeah. Pete. There's a lot of them. Yeah, no, every child... Almost every child in this is P or K. Mm-hmm. Um, even Catherine, uh, the, uh, the head of the... Um, uh, the historical society. So, like, okay, but not that's maybe that one. That one might be. It depends that, on how old she is. Yeah, but does, she's the we, same age as him. No, and we don't know that exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Cleary's also a really old dude, like much mm-hmm. older than J- than Jimmy. Plus, like, it's I'm assuming Tom Prescott did this before Jimmy. Probably. So yeah, it's it's not good. <laughs> it's really not. Um, and it is like a really good like it, it's it's not good. Like in terms of like the situation, but it's a really good like tr- like terrible revelation like for a horror story mm-hmm. because like oh god like just realizing how far that spans and also some of the intricacies of that with like Kyle and Kimber and like oh just mm. god damn that was both terrible and satisfying at the same time when I found when I realized that terribly satisfying yeah. Uh, but that is my actual thoughts. Until we go to final thoughts, I apologize for the four pages of notes I had. You should on this on this story. I mean, there's a lot of words. So was this longer than the previous one? No, it was actually the the, the shortest one. It's 14 pages. Shorter than even the first one. The first one was about 18. The second okay. one was about 16 or 17. The next one was 15, and then this one was 14. They've been slowly getting shorter by a page. Until five. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about five after okay, we okay. do all that stuff. So. Um, so, Mikey, your actual thoughts. Alright, so... My actual thoughts... Uh, start with the... Uh, sort of a... Uh, I don't know. A... Lack of realization... So, when it gets to the point where it has Mr. Prescott and Christy, yeah, I was like, so I was just like, who is Christy and why do I care? That might be a con toward our, like, reading a part a, uh, a week, mm-hmm. because that is actually, I did actually look at, I, I, was, I was like, who the hell is Christy? I had to go back to part two and realize that she was one of the missing girls from part two. Doesn't it say... No, it never well, re- it never actually says what her who she was. Well, it does say Christy in one part, but she's labeled she went, as Rude Nose. Yeah, no, no, Rude Nose is one of her friends. No, I'm pretty sure it was. No, okay. Well, anyways, Christy, but it does address it's that she went missing once. Yeah, previously, it, yeah. her name. It, it's kind of a deep cut. Yeah, but like one that like would be fine if we had read all the stories, all the parts at once. No, I still would have forgotten because it's only mentioned once her name. All right, well, I guess that's an outlier. <laughs> I don't know. I think I probably would have gone. Well, I, I would have either remembered that for some weird reason because I'm sometimes strange like that, or I would have gone back and checked to make sure like Christy was a person before. <laughs> <laughs> she is a person. You know what I mean, though? Like a person mentioned in the story prior. Yes. Because I don't, I, I honestly, my thing was like, I'd forgotten that she was missing. <laughs> what episode did it say? Part, part two. two. Part. It was, part, it was oh, when they're at yeah. the beach. Yes. Yeah. Part two, it says she's missing. Part one actually gives her name. Yeah. If I recall my research. Possibly. No, part one, it just refers to them at all as nicknames. Yeah, the round face, rude nose. And then in part two, we get her name. Mm. Christy Granger, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Um, because, and like, yeah, and then, because she, there's like a click of them, like there's like a yeah. couple of girls there. <clears throat> anyway, so moving on. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, the whole scenario with the baby male. Mm-hmm. You have a bunch of females tied to beds that are obviously drugged in some way that's really unsanitary and yet it happens 
that this happens, dude. In Nigeria. It also happens in Ontario. Southern Ontario. Like, oh, the South. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to everyone in the Apologies to our southern brothers. <laughs> and sisters. Uh, um, and gender fluids. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, no, like... Uh, it, the, I, the I believe, key yeah. difference <laughs> for <coughs> real-world baby males is that they um, grab people who are pregnant and don't know what to do and don't have anywhere to go to and they go, oh, well, just come into our nice, uh... <laughs> and we're not going to take your child, no! <laughs> no, um, no, like, there is that, but there's also, like, people like, um, oh, okay, this one's not quite a, a baby mill, but, like, this guy had, uh, I, this is actually an article maybe about a year or two ago in the paper, um, that a guy had, like, three women in his house for seven years that he had been, like, keeping from his family. He had a family on top of that. But he had three women in their basement that they were never aware of. Okay. That he was basically using as sex lives. For seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Humans are weird. Yeah. yeah. Human trafficking is a fucking terrifying and terrible thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know why that has to be clarified. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because it's really just fact. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I don't know if there's anyone listening that does human trafficking. I'm sure they'll take offense to it, though. Sure. <laughs> and then white knights will show up to defend them. <laughs> Somehow. All right, anyway. Uh, uh, so, continuing on, um, I did a little bit of research, and human trafficking is a federal offense. So, where's the FBI? Dude, they have a lot of money. They make a lot of money. The corrupt cops... The entire goat in the... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it's a small town in the middle of fucking butt fuck nowhere. Literally. Um, wow, yeah. Um, they're, they just pay off the cops to, to just um, change the uh, the paperwork a little bit. Like, th- this happens on a regular basis. Like, in, in news reports, in true crime mysteries and stuff like that, like, this is common in... Middle of nowhere places. It's just you'd figure by two generations in, because the father did it, and now he's doing it, and he's not young. So, like, you figure some of these people that their family members have gone missing, they've raised a stink about it, and be like, why is everyone going missing in this fucking um, town? Probably because, like, it's good for the town, and, like, being paid off kind of stuff. And, like, the infertility thing was what, got, what crushed a lot of people until, like... Oh, suddenly we can have babies. So no, like, I, I get that. Yeah. I'm not trying to defend people in yeah, the no, town yeah. who can't make babies. Mm-hmm. I'm defending all the people that move into town. Oh, yeah. And then they disappear, and then their family from out of town is like, where the hell did they go? It's just a mis- It's it's another. They added, they chalk it up to another unsolved mystery in, in uh, the uh, police reports. Like I'm not I'm not defending like why they, like like how they can do it. I'm just defending like the feasibility of this. Like it is something that I could see happening. Maybe not on such a scale, but then again, this is fucking fiction. You are allowed. It is elaborate. Yeah, you are allowed elaboration, like elaborations, and like um, uh, exploit. You're allowed to like add on to it, like up the ante a little bit. Yeah, I guess. I remember we were doing this longer uh, creepy boss in the past. I don't remember what it is. It's not a dear my best friend. It's another long one. Where there's like a small human trafficking situation that they had to break out of. Do you remember? And we were saying like, or rather Mikey I believe said that like, this can't really happen. And I refuted it because it, I literally saw an article. Like I was literally yeah. checking out articles about it. What well, one was that? I can't remember. I don't mean the article. I mean the creepy past. No, no, I know, what, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Um, I think, is it not the missing, the, the, the girl who went missing? Uh, oh, the one where... Future me. Um, uh, I, I believe you're talking about. Uh, we don't talk about Sarah. That's the one. Thanks. That doesn't help me now. <laughs> uh, it's the one where the like the the, the the son or like they're they're talk, like it's like the, the son goes out with the mom to like um, and she he saw a uh, uh, their daughter's like picture on a missing sign. 
Sarah something? Missing... Of course it's a Sarah. Yeah. Fuck. It doesn't matter. Anyways. Yeah, no, I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. And Future Me will have put up a... Uh, uh, put up the title right there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Thanks, Future You. Mm-hmm. He's here to help. Now go back and tell past me <laughs> <laughs> what it is so I would know the moment. I'm sure we will after recording. <laughs> cool. Great. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so my next issue is okay. the, the fight scene. Okay. I mean, Mr. Prescott is literally caught with his pants down. Actually, no, he has his pants on at this point. Initially. Yeah. Oh, so you that he mean like with his pants down. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, yeah so, yeah. why is there no stray 2 by 4 or pipe or anything? I mean, the females aren't going to fight back at this point because they're so drugged up. Yeah. So they can leave stuff flying around. Why wasn't there something there? Don't... I, I, I agree with you. <laughs> if the story wanted to have a happy ending, it would have had that there. Yeah. The story didn't want a happy ending. The story wanted this to be a dark fucking end. Or a dark turn. Like, yeah, I, 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 I got, I'm with you, man. I wish they had fought, they would killed Jimmy. I wish they had brought the gun. Because <laughs> yeah. that would have been so awesome. I wish he had gone for the gun when, he, when it fell to the, to the side and just shot Jimmy in the fucking face. Yeah, like, he just casually throws it aside, like, what's he gonna do? And then it turns out that Sam was, like, an expert frickin' quick draw <laughs> situation. <laughs> this is the difference through. between an action pasta and a creepy pasta. Yes. There are, there isn't a happy ending. Mm. Especially when it's dealing with, like, creepy shit like this. You say that, but there's well, an I, I, entire I, novel we're gonna be reading after this at some point, which probably has a happy ending. Maybe. Well, I, I mean, even if he took out Mr. Prescott... Yes. Yeah. Still gonna not going to have a happy ending. No, yeah, that's true. It's but still a fucking situation, time, like, but at least they can move on with their lives. Yeah, but, or you, what you could say is, like, um, if, because I think part five, we'll, we'll go into this part here, uh, part five um, was a, is a sequel to Barasco 1 through 4. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was done after the fact and stuff of that. But if it had been, this would have been basically the second, like, the, the, the second act where like the, the the heroes don't win the day, uh, but they got to come back and, and and get revenge or get their uh, their righteous avenging on. Um, so you take it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, w- I wish there was a like a pipe or something and just boom mm-hmm. and then rescue the girl, all the women there, and then uh, unveil all this horrible conspiracy and save the day, but. Well, who's going to tell the cops? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, fuck. Yeah, no, the problem is, like, they were they were so unprepared. These yeah. kids were so fucking unprepared. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it just makes the fact that they couldn't, they didn't do anything, they weren't able to do anything about it, or they they didn't do anything about it. Because, like, he's, like, he felt, like, the guy even, like, like, Sam was, like, just so defeated, he just, like, like, he wanted to do something, but he just didn't. Like, that is supposed to invoke, like, terror, like, just, like, a dark end kind of thing. You have to shut it down. I'm going to say it now because I'm just thinking of it now and I'll forget it by the time my time comes around. Um, when they like peek in the, peeked in the window and saw Jimmy doing the business... Oh, they actually, yeah, if they had... Well, they, no, they, they did, heard, didn't they? No, they, they just, just heard, heard the, noises. the noises. They didn't know who it was. Oh, okay. Well, when they went in and straight up saw him, they he only heard them when they started to go like freak out and leave. Yeah. So if they stayed sneaky and just went... Click, take a picture with their phones. Yeah, because this is in the age of Google. The FBI. So even if it's a freaking flip yeah, phone, in that case, you could take yes, a picture. Because the FBI like would have been on all of that shit if mm-hmm. they had been notified. But the problem is the cop, the local cops, mm-hmm. are keeping everything under wraps. That's the mm-hmm. problem. Like, but they know I, that. Hmm? So theoretically, yeah. if they snuck in there, took a picture, one picture of him, took a couple of pictures of everyone else there, and then just bailed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, without even trying to get hit, uh, Kimber or his sister. <laughs> That was never going to happen. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm just saying, they had, theoretically, yes, yes. they could have left, then drove out of town, told some non-corrupt cops what's going on. Just, yeah, call the FBI. Call yeah. the government. Yeah. Or, or not really the government, but yeah, call the FBI. The FBI would have brought, come in with a vengeance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no, I completely agree. Again, I'm on your sides, guys. Like, mm-hmm. I, I wish something had been done, but 
then the story wouldn't have been horrific, uh, as horrific as it is. It still is horrific. It would, it, I feel like happens. the story needed to have, like, I, I actually don't mind the story's dark end. Mm-hmm. As a story, as a, as a situation, I, I hate it. Yeah. But as a story, I was fine with it. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mikey, <laughs> your thoughts. I apologize. I will continue to steal your, your thunder. <laughs> Yeah, stealing thunder. He brings up something interesting, and we talk about it for five minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's into my extra thoughts. Really? You only have the one thing to talk about? And a few things. Oh. <laughs> we, I do feel like I did. Like, did I? Did, did, did you? Just a quick aside here. Yeah, just a quick aside. Like, did I actually like? Do you feel like cheated from like your uh, uh, your notes at all? No, they get covered. Okay. That's the, the key. Not right? by me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just worried that, like, I, I like, over, like, it's like, no, this is why you're wrong. <laughs> like, I just feel like I've, I've been doing that, and I, I, I don't know how to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Gamer, it's your up. Where should I begin? Probably on the first one that has been talked about. Okay. So, uh, well, my opinion is. <laughs> sorry. I was like, was there a great there to do that? Like, gag? <laughs> sorry, like, no. waiting for me to say anything so you can then just immediately jump in. Yeah. It's like, I'll bring, I'll start with this quote. I'm sorry, I I'm was. The... Well, why were you? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, just to, like, parody myself. That's fair. We do it. Self deprecating humor aside. Yeah, no, sorry, go on. All right, this first note is just something stupid, because it's one yeah. of those things where I read it a weird way, and okay. it makes it seem different. Uh, when they get to the art store, I was relieved to find the door unlocked, and we hurried past all the antiques and blown glass to the back of the store, where we found an open door and Catherine sitting at her desk. I just imagined that when they went in there, there was glass just shattered everywhere. Like, it's been know. blown up <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> Catherine, are you okay? <laughs> She's been gunned down. Yeah. yeah no, no our like, Google search. <laughs> the best character in this entire story. No. <laughs> My favorite character in this entire story. Maybe not the best. <laughs> Um, yeah. You well, know what blown glass is, though. Of course. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just another thing. It's like, I, I shot it's another him. Term for... I shot him. Bang. I mean, a glare. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Can I take that bullet back? <laughs> Ew. There we go. I'll just put that back in my gun. Sorry, that didn't happen. All right, when they, they're hiking to the clearing. When we finally broke through the tree line, I choked on my own deep breath and fell back against the tree as I looked o- over the quiet encampment. A large wooden signpost that was almost as long as the entire clearing was still standing near the entrance of the mine. That's fucked up. Because it's saying that the signpost... Is as long as the entire clearing. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. So the signpost is like 100, 200 feet tall. Like, how tiny is this clearing yeah. for this to be a reasonable size? And then later on, it's saying, we stepped in from the shadows and into, and into the vulnerability of the clearing. There were several large buildings still standing. Like, yeah, no, I, I agree that one. So it's like they like, get to the clearing, it's like, Whoa! What does that sign say? Do you or, 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 like, on you? or is it just like like <laughs> like all around the or, or yeah, well, it's like, a signpost yeah. that's as long as the clearing is. Oh God! Long. Uh, the, so the post itself so, is so, long. So, so, like, how do we, like they're just looking at it, it's like Kyle. I think we're idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how do we not see this sign? Yeah, yeah. it's poking above yeah. the trees. Brask yeah. <laughs> is here yeah. with an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've been, I've been maybe trying to do like figure out what the title cards for these ones are going to be. Oh, yeah. I was actually thinking it was just going to be like a silhouette of a mountain and like the tr- the tree house <laughs> on the side. I, for this one, I might just have that same like silhouette and then just <laughs> it's like a neon sign that's blinking. Yeah. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's like skinman, skinman, skinman. <laughs> yeah, tree, 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 skinman, skinman, skinman. Yeah, pretty so, much. <laughs> I just love that like, it's like Kyle I think we're idiots <laughs> I think we just stumbled across a an encampment of giants <laughs> what should we do <laughs> do you have dice we should roll sand first and then decide what to do yeah yeah oh. 
Yeah. Almost as long as the entire clearing. I, I don't... Like, that... That. Uh, yeah, I don't... Okay, I don't even understand what they're trying to get at there. To say... To describe the sign. Are they trying to say it's really tall? Yeah, what, what, was, what was the harm in just putting this... Uh, we saw a sign above the fucking mine shaft that showed uh, Drisking Underground Mine. That... Why do we have to have a sign as long as the clearing? It's like no, a large such... wooden sign post. Yeah, so it's on a post. Well, I don't... So it's not above the mine. It's essentially the clearing is here. I'm doing visuals again. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> funny audio podcast. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> clearing with uh, the mine and the buildings, and then like as they leave the uh, the tree line, there's just a sign there okay, at so the edge maybe saying it's like, that what it is. Yeah, maybe it's like one of those supposed to be like uh, again. I've been playing Red Dead a lot. Um, maybe it's like a ranch, like you know how like the ranch entrances, like they have like the, yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I envisioned. Except you envisioned it up, going up. I I took it the other way. I was like, <laughs> like just like an entire border. Yeah, right? it was, it's almost like bordering or like or like the full length. It was like I was like that's the I, I didn't bring up my thoughts of my actual my, any of my notes. I don't know why, but yeah, like I was I was so confused by that. I was just like, this is. Written wrong. Highly irregular. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like, how is this subtle? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Which way did you see it, Mikey? Or did you just ignore that and be like, it's a sign? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. just like, you know what? Mm-hmm. This sto- I'm giving this part a pass. Yeah. It's a sign. Normal post. Yeah. It is. So anyways. Yeah. They get into the, the first big building. Mm-hmm. And they're fine here. Also, I didn't have a note on this, but um, you said that... It described the ground being covered in blood and such. Tinted red, yeah. But it didn't say anything about the walls. It doesn't, no. But that could, that, the walls could be cleaned out. Or could be cleaned. But why would they bother? That they were painted red, so that you can't tell. Yeah. Yep. That, that works, sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Either way, um, so when they get to the refinery, to the machine, they say... Uh, this is the machine. This is where they take them, I said. This is the place where people die. Yeah. And then the next line is, Kimber isn't here, come on. <laughs> like, uh, leaving already? There has to be some some clues here. Like, they just be like, there's a weird machine, that's where everyone dies, let's leave. Yeah. Like, I understand the fear, but also, if they're trying to be the Hardly Boys, they should be Why trying to find clues. Click, click. click. They don't have phones. No <laughs> one, no one has, no one has phones capable of taking pictures. What's wrong with it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'm just saying that this game, the, the story was written in 2015. Yes. And it's not necessarily taking place. In maybe 2015. not. Maybe, but even like giving it like some leeway, like they um, mentioned Google. That's they mentioned the Google. Thing and I Google hear. was has been around since about 2002, 2004. Mm-hmm. Like safe bet. Like 2004, I'm saying is the safe cap for Google. Well before then. Well, yes, but I mean, like, before uh, the way it is now. <sighs> Should I like Google Google? No, don't do it. Um, <laughs> I actually did look it up earlier. Uh, but anyway, so... Um, so being in- incredibly generous in saying that this story takes place at the inception of Google. Yeah, or, like, the, in, well, and, the ki- and one of the kids, uh, like, uh, Whitney, ha- uh, seven years prior to that, all of that, this, Whitney had a flip phone. Yeah. So she, she texted she didn't her say flip phone? I... I well, either way, it's a cell phone. Yeah, it's a cell phone. So, well, she, so that's that's if it's one of the huge early long mid, ones. Early mid two thousands is okay. when is when they were like like young. Yeah, and then they're seven, sixteen, seventeen, seven years after. So what's seven years? We'll say two thousand four is like is when they when they were nine, ten. Yeah. So, so twenty eleven. Yeah. So twenty eleven, and then actually four, five. <laughs> yeah. So this then actually. That's actually twenty fifteen would be after like a few like maybe a year, give or take um, after the four years, and then he gets the no- he gets the suicide note yeah. uh, from Kimber. So yeah, it does still check out uh, like time in terms of if you take it that way chronologically, it does make sense for like having phones and stuff like that. Yep. Okay. Either way, they yeah, but they're also kids. Yeah. So they won't necessarily be thinking that and. They're not. Also, uh, they're not of the YouTube and uh, Snapchat or whatever yeah. age where we have to take documentation of everything. Yeah. Here's my poop. Look at that. Yeah. Send it to all of your friends. Mm-hmm. It's the best thing to do. It's really not stupid. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> there goes all our online listeners. 
You th- you think every single person who listens to this <laughs> takes <laughs> pictures of their shit I, and I, is extremely I, proud of it? No. There you go. We're fine. Okay. We still have just, everybody. Just go. <laughs> we'll always have River Roth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> yeah. no. Unsubscribed. Oh, no. Ah, no. Ah, ah. <laughs> right, anyway, continue before we prolong you more. But why? <laughs> Here? No. All right. Um, so my last one, when they're leaving their finery, and oddly enough, this is my last one, but I'll get into why. Um, they're around the corner, and they see... And they see a recently waxed, shiny green truck parked there. And then he's like, this is Jimmy Prescott's truck I breathed. And then Kyle's like, I know whose truck it is. I- I'm glad they know, because I had no idea. Yeah. It's like if they brought up that he had a green truck before, then they could be like, okay. Because yeah, then in passing now, they could be like, wait, there's a shiny truck there. That's Prescott's truck. But they never brought yeah, it up before. Yeah, we never brought it up before. At the same time, the way they do it here is like that's Jimmy Prescott's truck because like they know who whose truck that is. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, like they they confirm who it is. So yeah, but they have the revelation before I do. I, I and meanwhile, we're supposed to be going like toe to toe with them, you know? Yeah, along it's just, the story. It, it, you could take it as just it's another example of the story kind of like giving us information when it should have given us more information prior. I mean, it's really not that important. It's just it's weird that it's so. Um, like, specifically described? This one I consider probably a nitpick in terms of that. Kind of. But. Oh, so I'm back in the nook temporarily? Yeah. I can sleep on the couch for a yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll get to see all the renovations that uh, the Review Cultists oh, did. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. There's, like, no yellow left. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> it's fine. You're 50% yellow. You're, you're, you're bluish yellow, so it's acceptable. Continue. Well, you see, bluish yellow. No. Uh, oh. Not, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you wanted me to elaborate. Okay. So then, after that, all the skeevy shit happens. Yeah. At which point, like, I don't know if this is a, a good aspect of the story or a bad aspect of the story. I stopped giving a fuck. At this, like, when it started getting really like messed up with all the stuff that happened in that building, I started skimming over it. I stopped caring. I kind of assumed you would. Entirely, like, to the very end, to the point, like, when you started mentioning that the bones were, or the the dust was confirmed as the bones, I didn't even know. Because I skimmed over it. Like, I got the gist of it, but little stuff I missed. You didn't want to read more. It just wasn't, it's, I didn't want, yeah, you're right, I just didn't want to read it. So I don't know if that makes it good or bad. Well, here's the thing, oh, I, this isn't, it's, it's, it's an, it's an opinion thing, because I, I read this part, like, Mm -hmm. Thoroughly, like I, I, yeah. I didn't skim over it. Like you oh, I'm, I'm sure I could sit down and read it no, now. Yeah, it's yeah. just in the moment. I just, I don't want to read. It this. took me out. It took me out. Like I, I, I was like, took me by surprise how like, like oh, we're going this dark path. Yeah. And I, my other thought process was like, gamers not going to like this episode. No, because I was like, I actually, I, I actually called you after. Yeah, that. You, you gave I was me like, a warning, hey, buddy. How's, how's it going? Yeah, <laughs> like I was worried that you were like, I'm not going on the show this, this week. <laughs> you call me, I'm just like sitting in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I will say, um, this story, this the way they tackle, like it is a gruesome, terrible thing that happens mm-hmm. in the end of the story. Yeah. It's done tastefully, though. <laughs> and I say that like I've said that before, yeah, yeah. When, when, like, gore porn is done ta- Like, it's not gore porn, it's not... Gr- it's, it's almost porn porn. It is graphic, but it is not obscenely so. It is shock value that is done proper. Yes, because, like, they could have specifically, like, went in and... Went in the detail. Exactly. Exactly. They so, could have gone... The immature route and gone over the top exploitive, yeah. like at which point it's just straight porn. In that case, yeah, like yeah. like we could have gotten some really nasty like descriptions of of Prescott on and on Christie action. That mm-hmm. would have yes. been really that would have soured it even more. Yes, um, but they didn't. Mm. And in fact, when when Prescott shows up again, he's got pants on. <laughs> They, they actually put out their way to say they you didn't pull pants. a Trevor from GTA and just like yeah, walk around exactly. naked. Yeah. Um, like it's it is a, a, it, it is it, pre, it is presenting a horrific thing in a horror story. Weird, I know, but right. is done tastefully in terms of 
the level of of of, of uh, tastelessness that we have seen in other creep bosses, where like the person is just trying to be um, shock value for a horror, but yes. like doing it almost childishly. Yeah, like some people bring it up, and it has no reason to be there. Yeah. Like I don't remember what it was. It was something about a character, and there's like a book telling them what to do. And then the book makes the knife kill the dad. Um, and then the book lifts the woman up, rips Testament. her clothes off. Huh? Cold Testament. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And lifts the, the woman up, rips her clothes off to, rips expo- her, yeah. to expose her supple breasts or whatever it was. Yeah. And then squishes her against the ceiling. Yeah. It's unnecessary. Yeah, no. We we come, we come talk about that one. In, yeah. Um, but you, you, left, you didn't come for that episode because of... Well, Did, I don't sure... I think no, I was, I, I was there for that one. No, you weren't. You read it. You said, I don't want to be in that episode. No, it was a different one. That was that one. Are you sure? Yes. I could have swore it was something way more skeevy than that. Because that's just... No, that, was the one that, that was the one that either you were... You might have been sick and you just didn't want to come out that week. But that the was the one that you you like, you like told me like you didn't want to come out to that one because it was because of that. So. I don't think so. I have the recording. I, <laughs> <laughs> there, it is literally just me and me and Mikey I talking about, about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Either way, yeah, it doesn't matter. Either way, um, but yeah, no, it's like those levels of like, yeah, and we even commented though on that episode, mm-hmm. like that really didn't need to be that. Like that was just mm-hmm. gratuitous for the sake of being gratuitous. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. Like this whereas one, in this situation, it's all here for a reason. Yeah, so, it's, it's plain. It's plainly shown. Like it's yeah. it's it's shown straightforward, not elaborated or not flourished as much as uh, as it could be. Yeah, and that being said, it is still it does build a. A vivid picture for your head of what's going on, yeah. which it should. But again, it doesn't it elaborate doesn't, on it unnecessarily. It doesn't it's linger untastefully. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. linger too long. Yeah. So I'm okay with it in that regards. And in this situation, when you're trying to tell this story, and this is what is going on. This is the only way you can say it. Yeah. Without being without being an asshole. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Without being um, gross, really. Yeah. Like that, that being said, with all this said. I, I did skip over the ending, so <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what that says about me. But, I, yeah. Honestly, it's it just it like I mean, you guys have I've shown it multiple times on the show. Like that you guys have very different tastes in, when it comes to horror. Like you want more of the supernatural stuff mm-hmm. over the mm-hmm. realistic stuff, or over the over the not the realistic stuff, more of, of the real world's horror skeevy stuff. Because or like you'd rather have more fun actiony things than in, in the at the end of a horror thing than like the dark depressing thing. Sometimes, because sometimes, yeah. cause sometimes, like even if there's no action, um, but it's like it's horrible, and it just and sometimes it just ends more satisfying, and it's like okay, that's fine. Yeah, but like, like you yourself have said that you you prefer the action boss to that is I dare my best friend to ruin my life. Like, well, you, I keep bringing that up that because that's like the quintessential <laughs> long one that we've done yeah, that I, ever, the, the I can viewer, recall. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, either way, we're completely off topic now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so I suppose it did a good job creeping me out to the point that I um, that I skimmed over the ending. So I guess that's technically bonus points for it because yes, I was creeped out by a creepy pasta. Yeah. So yeah, it is not an action pasta. It is in fact a creepy pasta. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I can't really dock at points for that, I suppose. But we'll move on to final thoughts. Yeah. Honestly, that was a good segue for final thoughts because that had some merit to what I was going to go with. Cool. So. Um, yeah, so we'll go on to final thoughts. Uh, I apparently decided to have a have the last paragraph be the uh, like my signifier for this. <clears throat> so this is the the end, basically the end of the suicide letter. Um, Please get out of Drisking before your father finds this letter. Run away and never come back, and never speak of it to anyone. Their in- their industry has deep roots now. And the traffickers have lofty connections. Don't tell anyone. Don't keep this letter. Don't look back. I love you. I'm sorry I have to leave you. We all have to answer for our sins, and I'm ready to burn in hell for mine. Love is always and forever, Mom. Teen Gumshoe meets a true crime conspiracy. Jesus H. Christ. This ending's pretty dark. Um... As we also, mentioned heck, multiple times. Also, also, Jesus H. Christ? Yeah. Jesus Hell Christ? Heck Christ? Uh, no, it's actually... I, I, I don't can, know. I can't remember his... his he does actually... His actual initials are THS. Oh. THS? THS? Yeah. 
What? Jesus. No. <laughs> Like, Jesus Christ is actually like Jesus Christ. Like when you, let's, I've heard that multiple times, and it's actually in Lamb, the novel. <laughs> Why are you confirming that's T for the first name? Yeah, wasn't that what's on the cross? Is it T? Yeah, his name is Jesus, isn't it? Or it's J J H Christ or J H C. There's an S. Okay, that aside, anyway, I was just using it as a curse. No? I was literally just using it as a curse. It probably but, means something else. But anyway, um, yeah, this is uh, this was kind of a roller coaster ride, like, in terms of, like, mood. Um, if the ride ended with a malfunction, <laughs> like, in terms of, like, like where the characters were like, yeah, ah, yeah. And the last one was like a sharp jump where it disconnects from the rails like oh god oh god yeah exactly um, and then landed on the back on again yes um, like it's fun and creepy and mysterious adventure and then true horror hu- true human horror of baby mills and a town wide sec- conspiracy of trafficking and murdering um, just dropped down on that Mm-hmm. Um, and the villains get away with it. All I can really say is, like, in terms of recommendation for this story, um, if you are into, like, true crime horror, and also teen mystery, that's how I'd recommend this. I didn't hate it. I enjoyed the majority of the read, even by the end. Um, because in the end, it was a true horror story. Like, it does... And rather terrifyingly, and with creep. Sorry, I had to contain myself because you're like, in the end. Oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, all I can say otherwise, uh, aside from that recommendation, like, if you like true crime and the teen, horror, teen mystery stuff, and somehow like it fused together, you'll like it. also this the story. kid mystery part as well. Yeah, the kid part, yeah. Because part one was solid. Mm-hmm. Part mm-hmm. one was solid. Part two and three were, were okay. Part four was good for, like, horrifying me. So I give it props for that. So all in all, like, combined, I would recommend Baraska, but with the, with the kind of... Um, disclaimer. Uh, disclaimer of, of, like, you want to like true horror if you want to read the story. Like, mm-hmm. Like you want to read you you want to you want to be the person that like d- doesn't mind reading about human trafficking and that the ter- the the creepy c- true crime bullshit like that like that stuff if you like if you're, all, if you're okay with that you'll get a, you'll get uh, get some enjoyment out of the, reading the whole Brasco one through four um, if you just like weird kid mystery stuff maybe just want, read part one and just leave mm-hmm. <laughs> um, otherwise. Baraska 5 better be about bringing down this godforsaken town. Just, like, it, I, I almost kind of want part 5, to, or number 5, to just be an action pasta where they just find a way to, like, take down the town or burn it all. Like, Well, what, it has to be, because what else would they do? Well, exactly. They're gone. gone. Yeah. So they're clearly going to go back. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And unless they just go back and it's actually not about them at Kyle all. dies and then they take Kimber again and it's over, GG. Yeah, that <laughs> like it's be, entirely possible. Yeah, but yeah, so that's that's my recommendations and final thoughts for the story. Like, um, yeah, it was like yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it managed. It did what it, it did. What a horror story is supposed to do. It horrified me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't hate it. Like. I don't. I was. I was. I was shocked by the ending, um, but not repulsed. Mm-hmm. So, for me, Baraska gets a recommendation. Um, but again, you have to be the one of those one of the people. I'm not saying like like that's a weird. You're an outlier if you're one of those people. Yeah. But like, if you like, if you enjoy true crime, like elements in um, in stories, in like horror stories or in mystery stories, you're gonna like the story. Um, because it's done straightforward, like we mentioned, it's done, like the the parts that are kind of horrific are done straightforward and not gratuitously. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendations. Uh, Mike, he said through. I'm just gonna say not recommended. Okay. Overall, 
Um, or just this last part? Well, as stated before, the first one is a good jumping point, but then it just... They forget to put on the bungee cord. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, another another nice analogy. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. Except, um, uh, except a little bit more lethal. <laughs> Hold back. More guaranteed of lethality. Yeah. 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 Um. And the the biggest issue it for me is that it seems like way too many people know the secrets of the town. So why hasn't anything been done about it? Have you seen Hot Fuzz? Yeah. Like yeah, but that's a small town. So is this? So is Drisking. But it has a high school. So does that town. So does that town. I don't remember the town of Hot Fuzz. Has, I don't remember the town. I don't know, it, it is. It is basically the same size as Drisking. Like that's what you, I got the feeling. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it had, it has like a bunch of ki- like a whole gang of kids in it that are uh, they have to go to school somewhere, presumably in the town. Yeah, I, I, I get you though. Like if you don't like care for it, like, you don't care for it. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wouldn't recommend. No. Okay, that's fair. Then gamer. Uh like the first one. like the first one a lot. Yes. Then it, it didn't really... What, what's your analogy for, like, <laughs> enjoying something and then something going horrible? Oh, shit, I gotta come up with one now? I wasn't yeah, prepared. Another one. <laughs> Enjoy riding, and then you hit a tree, and you don't have your seatbelt on, so you go through the windshield. It's... <laughs> yes. I can think of a video game analogy. <laughs> there you go. Okay. It's like Army of Two. The first game is, uh, it's it's fun to go through. It has an interesting story, and it's fun all the way through. Uh, and then Army of Two Fortieth Day comes out, which is the middle of the of this four part situation where they expand upon it, but not in ways that the first one really did it well. Like they they goes off the beaten path a little bit, and then. Uh, I don't even know what the last one's called. Call of Juarez or something? That's like that? a completely different game. Call of Juarez? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's, a that's, Western. that's a That's a Red Dead knockoff. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, it's uh, Army of Two, Devil's Cartel. Yeah. It's it, to the point where it's changed to something that it's not the reason that you're there in the first place. Because you don't play as Rios and Salem anymore, which is the entire reason yeah. you play the first game. Yeah, I, I mean, like, Going back to the like the story, not the analogy of the game. Well, yeah, because yeah, I, yeah. W- by the time I finished reading the first game, reading the first story, reading the first story, yeah. um, I'm like, okay, this is cool. It's it's like the Goonies. You, yeah. You're kids and you're trying to investigate this horrible shit that's going on, and we'll find out what this horrible shit is, if it's supernatural or not. Cool. And then fast forward to them being adults, and it's not the goodies. Well, not anymore. adults, but like teenagers, because yeah. young, young adults, young adults, yeah, they're not the goodies anymore. Yeah, no, they aren't. They're now the they're now the CW the goonies. <laughs> they're CW's the goonies. <laughs> they're all the Harley boys. Yeah, or they're all the Riverdale. They're they're, they're, they're Riverdale now. Um, Either way, they might as well be different characters. <laughs> yeah, to a degree, because um, they like think completely differently. I mean, they develop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. The f- like, my thing here is, uh, fuck, I had something and then it's, I'm trying to remember it now. Um, no, it's gone. Fuck it. Uh, gone forever. I, I found a different analogy. Did you? It's like filling up a balloon with helium. So you get a good high for the first bit, and then once the helium starts seeping out, it slowly falls. Or, I, I thought you were going to go, it's like, it's, it's like, it's like a bol- uh, like, like sucking off a balloon with helium. It's sucking it's, off. <laughs> you heard me. I did, unfortunately. It's fun. Do you have some soap for my ears. It's fun for the first part. Kind of okay. It kind of like kind of like overstaying its welcome in the second part, and then and then by the third fourth part, you're throwing up because you've had you're you're suffering from uh, from helium uh, poisoning. Is that, is that a thing? I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, 
I did have something, but I can't remember. Fuck, I cannot remember what I was going to say. So, sorry. Continue with your recommendation. And no. Army of Two. So. <laughs> and the thing that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> okay, it makes sense. I like the first one. I recommend it. Yeah, yeah. And then two and three, they're, they're okay, but it's a completely different story. Yeah. And four is part of that same completely different story still. The problem being is I like the original story better. And then I figured out what I was going to say. Okay. Um, so, it, yeah, like the first part does lean to like, is it supernatural? Is it going to be mundane? And the next ones... They kind of do build up, like, like if you, like, looking at it, like, again, I also have the benefit of reviewing our episodes again. Like, there were inklings throughout the stories, like, throughout the parts yeah, of what was, supernatural. Of, no, of, of something being, of this was going to be, like, the way it is. Yeah. You know? Like, horrific and, like, like true crime kind of horror kind mm. of stuff. Mm. It's just, we wanted it to be supernatural. Well, it's always more fun. Yeah. And that's the difference, like... This story didn't want to just be fun. This one wanted to actually be something darker and serious. Yeah. yeah. And that's like fine. I, like I said yeah. earlier in the end of my notes, like this is probably the first one that really made me not want to read anymore. So I guess technically it's the one that's creeped me out the most out of all the creepypastas I've read so far. Yeah, but... Yeah, I... T- yeah. So that's not a bad thing. So I can't say that I don't recommend it. Mm-hmm. Because it's the only one that's had that effect on me. So, if you're kind of sensitive to skeevy situations and you want to be creeped out, yeah. If you want to be creeped out and you're sensitive to that, read it. Yeah, but if you don't have any tolerance whatsoever yeah, for if skeevy you, shit, don't read Braska. Yeah, <laughs> don't finish Braska. Yeah, just read one. Well, also, yeah, one and done. Yeah, one part one is is could be a standalone. It totally like, can. Like it's good. Oh no, she went on. missing, and like there's just the air of mystery about it. Yeah. Um. And then, like, the other ones just kind of expand on it and add, and give us a proper conclusion, a horrific conclusion, mm-hmm. but a conclusion nonetheless. It's like either you read the first one or you read all of them. There's yeah. no other stopping point. Yeah. Part one, that's your last chance to stop. Yeah. <laughs> if you start reading yeah. part two, you have to read all the way through. And I guess we'll find out in part five at some point um, whether or not it is another, like, one of those things is like, all right, yeah, you either have to read... Like one, one or one are done, or like one are done plus sequel. Because <laughs> like you either read the first part, read one through four, or read one through four and the sequel. Yeah, that's probably the the tiering situation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Yeah. Because I mean, I don't know how else it can be carried on. Because how, how many pages? It's a, a so yeah, hundred thousand here, pages. Here's the thing. <laughs> We may take. We're, we're probably going to take a break from Braska part or between Braska, uh, like our current Braska run, and uh, Braska Five, because when I looked into Braska Five, it isn't just a part; it's a full-on sequel to Braska One through Four. Like it is 105 pages, unformat or unchanged from what she had, what CK uh, Walker has on her blog. Because it's not even on the Reddit No Sleep, it's on her blog. So How many pages on, was 1 to 4? 1 through 4, they were 15, they, uh, they were each, like, 18, 16, 15, and 14. Oh, so Braska 5 is longer than all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> going to be difficult. Un, un, like, when, if you re, like, I'll take off all the formatting, like, again, like, font size changes and, like, spacing and stuff like that, it comes to about 80 pages uh, on the dot. Hmm. Um, so we are probably we'll see how take, we're going to tackle that. Yeah, we're going to, we're at, and it's also apparently twenty chapters. Fuck. Like, and I don't know how there's that much content left in the those, story. Some of those chapters are like a, a few paragraphs. Okay. The, um, but either way, there's eighty pages when you yeah. remove formatting. It's a novella. Time. It, it is basically a novella or yeah, a novel. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm genuinely just thinking, like, how can you go on that long? Because yeah. they've solved the entire mystery, so yeah. all that's left is getting is, vengeance. Is, is vengeance and revenge, uh, or, or rescuing Kyle's body? Because <laughs> I don't. At that know. point, it seems like they're writing Kyle off. Like, yeah, he, he's a vegetable. Honestly, he's living I, at home, but like, he can't do anything anymore. Yeah, honestly, when Kyle, the way Kyle was brutally curb stomped to death, I was pretty sure he just. Well, I guess Kyle's been in there, yeah. and then and then Clear is like, he's not quite dead yet. It's like he's. Pretty Pretty fucking dead. His he's, le- his neck is literally like hanging like a string. He's getting better. <laughs> like he's like he yeah. nods and a knight walks over to him with a sword. <laughs> oh, he died. 
<laughs> like shit. <laughs> so yeah, um, we will we will figure out where we're going, where we when we are going to do Braska Five. We may not. We may take a few a uh, few weeks to do that one mm-hmm. and just do some smaller stories because we we use a little bit of a break from between Braska. Well. Would we have to do that in like? Sections of like twenty pages at a time or something, maybe. So we might have to do another like multi-parter. Multi-parter. Mm-hmm. We're not doing one part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be a freaking ten-hour recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. You know. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess that is the end of Baraska Part Four and mm-hmm. the main story of Baraska. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you like what you heard, if you didn't, uh, leave us a comment in the comment section below where it's posted, whether it be on Q6, Facebook, YouTube, or Tumblr. Uh, we're also on iTunes, so leave us a rating and review. We uh, help us spread like a virus. Um, we you can also get in touch with us on Twitter uh, at uh, well, Mikey is at the E stands for evil. The gamer in yellow is at the gamer in yellow without the W, and I'm at Review Cultist. Uh, you can also leave us an email at aldenterigmortis at gmail.com. That's a l d n t e r i g m r t i s at gmail.com. Where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep bosses you'd like us to discuss on the show, and you can also yeah, let us know uh, if you like this format of us doing like for these these serialized shows. Like, please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, like part one, part two, part three, part four in like week one, week one, week one, week two, week three, week four kind of thing. Um, I, I find I find, personally as a as the host like it. I feel like it works. Mm-hmm. The only minor issue is that sometimes uh, we forget things from like previous parts, but otherwise, as long as we're just doing some a little bit more due diligence on like going back and remembering and yeah. like, checking out something, I think we're fine. <laughs> uh, if you like to help support the show, you can go to Patreon, uh, look up El Dante Ray Mortis, and just select the backer tier we have. We have two dollar and five dollar tier with early access and special episodes. Um, and to our patrons that are helping support the show already, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. Rival Roth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as well legit as not have a show right now without you. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and all the, and the other patrons. and everyone else. Yes, of course. Um, look, I, I was talking about you, Greg. I was talking about our Patreon and in Ross. general. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, and to our listeners and the authors of the stories that we've been discussing on the show for almost five years, thank you immensely. Because honestly, without you, we wouldn't have a show. Like we wouldn't have stories. We wouldn't have listeners. We wouldn't have kind of motivation to keep going. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you. <laughs> so, so thank you all from the deepest part of my heart. And our heart. Our heart. Ruining. 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 All three of us have yeah. one combined heart. It's sitting on the table next to the recorder, <laughs> all hooked up together. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, a freaking heart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so thank you immensely. Um, so until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I am Mikey, the E is Tens are Evil. And I'm the Gamer Neil. And this has been Al Dente Brigamortis. Sleep well. This is Future Cultist. You may be wondering why we didn't address whether or not this was the greatest creep post ever, as it has apparently been rumored and suggested. Well, that's because we have yet to determine whether this is, in fact, the greatest creep post ever, because there is a fifth part. So, stay tuned for our review of the fifth installment of Baraska at some point in the future. Toodles! (laughs) 